So much of the music we love has to do with the people we love. Remember the first moment you heard your song? The first song played at your wedding or your daughter's wedding. The music of your lifetime is colored by the relationships you have. That's why we thought it would be fun to get together some country music couples to tell their love stories and sing their favorite love songs to share with you in an intimate setting. Celebrating love and relationships, this series is sure to make you smile and reminisce about those you love in your life. Welcome to Country's Family Reunion, Sweethearts. We're celebrating love with our friends and our fellow artists on Sweethearts Reunion with the cast of Country's Family Reunion and their spouses and significant others and whatever, <laughs> Jimmy Fortune and Nina. The last time we were sitting somewhere together, I think was in the back of my boat out in the middle of Old Hickory Lake one Sunday when y'all were nice enough to come and uh, spend some time with us. Well, you were nice, nice enough to invite us. We don't want no many people with boats, so it's pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping maybe you'd uh, help me make the next payment or two, won't it? Well, I, if you and I write a song together, which we did, have, have written a song or two together, uh, we, we might be able to get another boat. Where'd you get such a pretty wife? Uh, the good Lord looked out for me. I don't deserve it. Believe me, I tell you what, I overmarried big time. But um, son, every one of us did, buddy. Well, you ain't the only one. I, I really feel like she's a godsend. I, I, uh, I was going through a divorce. It's been about 20 years ago now. We've been married um, almost 16 years, uh, coming up, and uh, knew each other. We dated for about five years, but um, I was going through a divorce, and it was back in in Virginia, and. Uh, and there was this, uh, some friends of mine were trying to get me to go out. You know, I mean, you wouldn't think, I mean, me, me being in the business and the stat of brothers and all, and, you know, I, I, you would think, well, God, he'd never have a bad day in his life. But, you know, I was kind of going through some depression and things like that. And, uh, and I was kind of staying at home. I wasn't really going out much. And I had some friends of mine said, hey, we're going to go to, uh, to this building supply uh, that a friend of ours owns, which I bought things from there as well, and said there's a party there tonight, so why don't you go with us, and I turned them down, I was like, nah, I don't want to go, you know, and I was just, and they made me go that night, and so when I went there, I walked in the place, and I see this beautiful girl sitting, up, standing up on the staircase, and, and I was like, I saw her, and I was like, man, she's just beautiful, I said, there's <laughs> no way. You make it sound like Gone with the Wind or something. Well, <laughs> it, it was pretty much that way. <laughs> But I'm like, I'm like, uh, everybody's asking him to turn to dance and something. I had this guy who was with me. He said, I'm going to ask her to dance. I said, all right, you go ahead. So he went and asked her to dance. She danced with him. So I said, well, she'll dance with him. I'm pretty sure she'll dance with me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I went up and asked her you to dance. You know he's going to watch this. I know. That's fine. Okay. He, he don't Ooh. care. I've told him that. Oh, say so he's going to oh, watch yeah, it. Oh, yeah. okay. a friend of mine up home. Okay. But anyway... Uh, it, she, uh, I asked her to dance, and she, she, she was dancing with me. And while we were dancing, um, she's looking all around like this. And she's, I said, "What are you? Who are you looking for?" She said, "Somebody told me one of the Statler brothers was going to be here tonight." She said, uh, "She said, she said, uh, I don't, but I don't see anybody here that looks old enough to be one of the Statler brothers." I, and I said, I looked around. I said, "Neither do I." I said, so. So we talked a while and everything, and so we, we and I, and I kind of, you know, we stopped dancing. I went on kind of about my business. So I said, well, shoot, I'm going to ask her to dance again. So I went back over, and I asked her to dance again. She, we're dancing, and uh, somebody comes up and comes by me and says, hey, I enjoy your TV show. And I said, oh, thank you very much. And she's looking at me like, what, what TV show have you got? I said, well, I said, I'm, I'm on a TV show. And she said, what is it? I said, well, I'm on the Statler Brothers TV show. She said, you're, one of the, you're the Statler Brothers? I said, I said yeah. And uh, so then uh, I, I proceeded to, to bug the heck out of her. Uh, I know he showed up at my work the next day. <laughs> <laughs> showed up at your work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she worked there. She worked I like worked the, oh, at the building place. supply, yeah. yeah. Oh, I needed some building supplies. <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden. Yeah, all of a sudden. Uh, but... <laughs> But it was one of those things where, I don't know, we, we just took a liking to each other. And, and I think that was the magic part of it. We liked each other so much. Because I had a lot of baggage with my life. I mean, I have seven children, uh, eight grandchildren, and they're a blessing. But, you know, a, with that comes a lot, of, uh, a, a lot of things that you have to work through. And, and bless her heart, she, my, the important thing was to me that she loved my children 
even more than me, and, and she does. And, and that's the magic about Nina. I, she, she accepted my children and accepted my life, my crazy life that I live, and she has helped me. She's just been a helpmate and uh, just a wonderful love of my life, really. I don't think anybody could say anything nicer than to say that you've been good to their kids. Mm. I think that is just a supreme mm. compliment and just speaks mm -hmm. so well of you, Nina. Yeah. Well, thank you. Do you, uh, I, well, I know you do. You, you don't sing and perform with mm -mm. Jimmy, but, but you go on the road. I do. Travel together. I do. And you handle some of the business, the bookings, I think even, don't you, some? Yeah, I do all the paperwork. I minister his publishing and just- She does yeah. it all. Mm -hmm. And I, I wouldn't, like I said, when the Static Brothers retired, I was wondering what I was going to do. I knew I wanted to continue on to write, sing songs and, 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 and everything. And I knew that, that that part of it I felt like I could handle, but I didn't know anything about the business. And she just took it upon herself to learn, to get the books and start studying about everything. I didn't know anything about it either. I'm, I'm an yeah, accountant. She's an accountant, yeah. That's my and, uh, thing. But her background, I mean, she turned her business, her dad's business around at the building supply company for him. And it made it really successful. And uh, what she did for me was pretty much the same thing. Put me right back on track. And um, it, it, I just couldn't do without her. I really couldn't. Did you actually enjoy Nina getting in the, the van or the bus or whatever and the, on the plane and traveling on the road? Because well, like that's got to be plane. a new part of your life. You don't <laughs> she, do planes? She don't look, do that very much. No. Not, not often. Not a plane. But, I mean, it's, it's fun in a, in a way. And you get to meet new people and... And that kind of thing, but I, I'm a homebody too. I like I like being at home. Do you do the record table? Yes, I do. I do the record table. Like, like Ricky Skaggs does. Yep, I do Jimmy's record table. <laughs> or used to do anyway. So y'all have been together for how many years now? Yeah, we've been married 16 years. And we met 21 years ago. Mm -hmm. So. Well, what took you so long? Five years. Well, well he had seven kids. I need to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I wanted we, to do. We. You know, it was, like I said, there was an age difference. There's 15 years difference between us. And um, and I got to admit. That's nothing. Man, that's, nothing. That's, that's nothing. That's nothing. She says that's nothing. That's nothing. I don't play uh, for 15. He didn't ask that question over here. No, he didn't. The age yeah. difference on it over here. <laughs> okay. I, I didn't ask Joe and David, all right? All right, how many years? <laughs> you see, did it, Joe. We're above them, did. less than them. <laughs> oh, that's a good no, answer. That's a political answer if I ever heard one <laughs> no. right there. Come on. How many? 20. Almost oh, to the good. day. Wow. I'd kill for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go ahead and kill him. <laughs> yeah. I got to say, uh, you know, we've been here 10 years now, Nina and I, and... Uh, in Hendersonville. In Hendersonville. And we have come to love everybody in this room so much, all, mm -hmm. all the couples, everybody here. We've, we've been on the road with each other, we've, 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 and everybody has accepted us and been so kind to us. And I just want to say publicly that I love each and every one of you dearly, and I know Nina does too. Thank you all so much for being so kind it's to us. It's easy to be nice to nice people. How about a song? I sure will. I do one for you. I didn't write so this the song. Truth is, I wish I had the truth is, you'd rather go on the road with him than to kiss him goodbye. Oh. <laughs> Y'all better write that. I'm sorry, that's an old gag. Hey, hey, that's how I almost lost her. Watch it. <laughs> uh, I wish I'd written this song. Uh, this is a David Gates and Bridge song. Uh, I used to sing this song years ago, and uh, it kind of takes me back to a time, which it will everybody, I'm sure, that when you first heard this song, and... It's just a great love song, one of the ones that kind of inspired me to write songs. So here we go, y'all. <clears throat>
Nina, you had the greatest look of love and pride on, on your face. Do you ever get tired of hearing him say Never. I don't think any of us would. No, I get tired of hearing him play guitar when I'm trying to watch TV, though. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she does. She he, cannot. He plays guitar all the time. I pick it up, and I'm, I'm like, so I'm looking over, and she goes. <laughs> now, I, this is what I don't understand. You marry a musician, and then you don't want him to play. No, 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 don't, not <laughs> Just go to another room. My, no, my daughters are like that. There's a time and place for everything. <laughs> <laughs> so my daughters complain. It's like, stop it. It's like, you marry a musician. <laughs> yes. When you stand over on the side of the stage, and there's a big crowd and everything out there, and Jimmy is the, the center of attention. Mm -hmm. What what goes through your mind? Gosh, I don't know. I'm just I'm just proud of him, and I do. I'm prejudiced of. I think he's got a great talent, and he does. I love to hear him. I never get tired of it. That's good. Aww. You couldn't say anything nicer than. Well, she she you know, I guess we're our own wor worst critics, you know. And I'm always critiquing myself and saying I wish I'd done this, and I would. And she's always Jimmy, that you're you're just fine. You did great, you know, and. And, you know, she builds you up when you sometimes don't feel like you did a great job. Yeah. And uh, she, she's, a, she's my cheerleader, and, and I appreciate her for, for doing that because, you know, the, we, all, we all need that. And I think at times, you know, we say we don't, but we do. We need somebody. Mm -hmm. We need a cheerleader. Man. All right, let's put the shoe on the other foot. Lang Scott and Linda Davis. Yeah. Lang, do you, yeah. do you cheer Linda on? Are you her yeah, cheerleader? I, I look it good with the, yeah, I look good with the pom-poms, too. So it's a, <laughs> he did. Yeah. He did. <laughs> no, I do. I, I, I think it's, it's been give and take for us through, throughout, you know, now, 30 years of marriage. Yeah. And um, so it's, you know, you have, have times that, that really challenge you, then, and you lean on each other. And those times when you come out the other side of that, it definitely adds strength to the relationship. That's what we found. 
You guys have had an interesting relationship. Now, Linda, the first time I ever met you, you were playing the piano mm -hmm. in the lounge at the Sheridan Music, Music City. City. Yes. And it was about the time that oh, Lang right. had won the yes. You Can Be a Star. Did you go in there one night to hear her? Is that how you met? No, we met. Uh, we had met but prior to that. Um, Linda moved here. I, I was already here in early 82. And Linda moved about six months later from Texas. I'm from South Carolina originally. And we met, I think the second day she was here, she was a receptionist at the studio where I'd been signed with a little writer's deal with a, with a guy. And Not a very good receptionist. Yeah, but she had some really nice Calvin Klein jeans that I noticed right off. And so that was just... Well, now, y'all worked together for a while. Now, this, I guess, was after you got married because... Right. Linda, you were on the road with uh, with Reba, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and then Lang joined was, later. Is it, how, how did yeah. that all come down? We actually were hired together, you know, and it was kind of like a, a little package that Lang plays awesome acoustic guitar and and sings, and and I did my my singing with her, and we traveled the world, you know, with Reba for eight years. So it was. It was a wonderful window of time. The hard part of that was Hillary did not go with us everywhere. And that's when we had Lang's mom and daddy. They moved here, bless their hearts, to uh, look after her while we did our traveling. That's what made that possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so. Well, you know, that's a very different thing because you were not the headliners on the show. I mean, you weren't. Uh, Ricky and no, Sharon and we that were type the thing. Side, the side but, people. But yeah, you know, but but you were together. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's got to have been terrific. It was. It was unusual and, and I felt bad sometimes the other band members they didn't have their, you know, spouse with them and we got to do some fun things and see some beautiful sights and and we got to see them together. Now Hillary and her husband Chris are doing that mm -hmm. through the eyes uh, you know, they're touring and he's their drummer. So now they get to... This. Biggest difference now is there's wheels on the luggage. <laughs> well, that... <laughs> <laughs> you came along too I, soon, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I might have... It was pretend to be hired for guitar and background vocals. I was a luggage slepper for a long time. <laughs> Woo. At what point did you realize, and of course, if anybody watching this lives in a cave and doesn't know, Hillary Scott of Lady Antebellum is, is Lang and, and Linda's daughter. When did you realize, when did you really come to grips with the fact that, hey, she's really got something special and, and she's going to make the big time? Well, first yeah. of all, uh, we noticed that she could sing and had a good ear early on and she would, you know, sing around the house and, and do some things through her little school, but she didn't really like the idea of the industry because that represented us leaving, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. getting on a bus and her not going with us. So mm -hmm. she really didn't appreciate that part. Um, but we start about her teens, about the age Riley is now, about 14, she started, you know, noticing how much fun it is and, and really loving to use her voice and noticing the reaction that, she got from people when she used it. But we tried really hard to push her into being a nurse. Yeah. <laughs> that no didn't fly. Bear. Didn't fly too well. <laughs> we thought, well, there's retirement or something in that. You can't always bank on. Well, yeah, you'll but, never make it in country music. Don't even try that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what the odds are? It's just like, you know, the whole thing. It's like my daddy used to say, why do you think you call it playing music, son? <laughs> <laughs> it's not work. I'm so, okay. I don't know the story, and uh, there's a great family uh, a picture there. Oh, I don't, uh, Riley's very little. She there, is. And she Hillary. Does. I don't know the story of exactly how Lady Antebellum came together and how she was selected. Was she selected to be a part of that, or did she choose the guys? Or no, well, she had a development deal in RCA, and she did a showcase, and Victoria Shaw was really Hillary's cheerleader. You know, as much as we, you know, were kind of exposing her to the music industry, it always takes somebody else besides, you know, mom and dad. And, and Victoria, we give her credit for really seeing and, and hearing something in Hillary's voice that she took and just, you know, really under her tutelage, Hillary became a really good songwriter and, you know, that exposure. And then she did showcased and, uh, for RCA and then they passed on her and Hillary was pretty devastated at that time that she got turned down by a record, you know, by her showcase, which was really good. It was a really good it showcase. It was a very good showcase. And so after that, she actually, and, and that time MySpace was very popular and so <clears throat> she already knew Charles from his MySpace page, Charles Kelly. 
And so they were at an audition for some show or something that's one of these reality or Lasted thing that they were. Three minutes. Yeah, and, and she <laughs> saw him and she introduced herself to Charles. And, you know, Charles says, you know, he's, I saw a cute girl. So I said, hey, you ought to come over and we ought to write some together. I've got, you know, a friend of mine that we write songs. And so that's really how the, the band started. Mm. And they, when they first met, they, they just hold up for about six months. And that first album of theirs, I think they wrote eight out of the 11 songs on that first album during that six months that they were together. I want to mention one other thing that, uh, and if any of the aspiring artists are watching this show, this might uh, give them some, you know, inspiration. Well, Hillary auditioned before the, the band came together. She auditioned for American Idol twice, and she never got called back. The last time I remember, I think they paid them to come sing on their show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell there's a proud mom and dad, and of course, your grandparents now, because yes. she's got... Uh, Isley. Little girl, little girl. Yeah, we're Granny Annabelle now. So. Granny Annabelle. <laughs> I gotta be honest. When I first heard the name Lady Annabelle, I thought that's the worst name I ever heard in my. But uh, shows how smart I am, or am not. How about a song from Grandma and Grandpa over here, Lang Scott, and his wife Linda Davis. You want to tell them where this song came from? Just a little background. No, you go ahead. I'm well, there was. Uh, a little session that Lang and I, let's see, y'all y'all just got a new record that you've done, Sharon and Ricky, and I, I know that several uh, have recorded some duets. Well, we had the opportunity to go down to Muscle Shows with the friend Walt Aldridge, and he had found some, some songs, and this, gosh, this has been probably 20 years ago, has it been? At least, but yeah. We, we did about four or five songs, and, and we're real proud of them, and um, nothing much came of it, but the song stuck, and, and especially this one we really liked and thought it was appropriate for today. The road is long and life is short We think we've learned it all and then there's more just look at us, we fuss and fight It doesn't matter much who's wrong or right You could have left, I could have walked away Shaking our fist at fate But every time we nearly lost each other Never gives up oh, no. They say that love is patient and kind And love would be the last to draw the line I look at you, still loving me I may be blind, but sometimes I see I could have said goodbye and you could have let me go But every time we nearly lost each other There was a moment of truth Something keeps pulling us back Each 
Watch out, Larry, tell another joke. Okay. No more jokes about <laughs> the Red Rose. That was great. Thank you. That was just terrific. You mentioned, I got to say this for no real reason other than I just want to say it. You mentioned Lang's mom and dad coming yes. to town yes. to yes. take care of Hillary while y'all were on the road with Reba. Lang's dad was one of my favorite people. His name was Willard Scott. Yeah, like the weatherman. Not the Willard Scott that did the, the weather and all, but what a nice man. He sure is. He's he's in heaven, and he's lo oh, let me tell you, he was a big fan of these shows. Was he? First one I got invited to do, I took over a copy as soon as I got it in the mail. Oh, he was so proud. That was like one of his most favorite things that his daughter-in-law got to do. Well, he was a wonderful man. So, mm -hmm. Lang, great to to see you back here. Thank and, you for having us. Well, and thank great, you for great to me. have you. Well, you know, Lang and I go back a long way. <laughs> long, long ways. Sonia Isaac said something to me across the room. You said something about we have got a great story about how we met, and that's your husband, uh, Jimmy Urie, there. And I've known Jimmy as a songwriter for uh, many, many that's years. Right. That's In right. fact, I was thinking, this, this is terrible. Here we are doing this love show with I Love Us and Love and Me and You. The song Jimmy Yuri and I wrote together was called Separate Ways. <laughs> yeah. Not exactly about love, was right, it? Right, that could be on another episode. <laughs> Something entirely the opposite of what we're doing today, but that. <laughs> you just wormed your way into an invitation to come Thank back. Thank you, there you go. You're always Talk. welcome. So, did you tell me the story, you and Jimmy? Well, um, it is a really sweet story, and it kind of works better if we both tell it together, but we, um, when we were young, we were both singing with our families, of course, my family, the Isaacs, and Jimmy was singing with the Yeary family, and they were from Hillsborough, Ohio, and um, of course, we, we grew up in Ohio as well. We grew up about 30 minutes apart. Didn't know wow. each other. Didn't know and, each other. Yeah, but we didn't really know each other, and so we were invited to sing at this little local cable TV show in Beattyville, Kentucky. I was living in Campton, Kentucky. I moved to Campton, Your Kentucky. Your family is there, and um, I was 10, and he was 14. And probably for what, a year and a half or so? Probably about a year and a half. We sang about once a week or, or, or once every couple of weeks. We would see each other and we would sing our families. They would sit on one side of the room. I'd sit on the other, well, with my family. They would sing. We would sing. And we did that for like a year and a half until, <laughs> until the evangelist that was running everything ran away with the cameraman's wife. And <laughs> There's and the another show. country song. Right there. <laughs> so, we need to have them on the show a, next time. Yeah, the next show. show. That's <laughs> another episode. But, uh, In a separate way. But yeah, and so separate we ways. separate ways. That's right. So we we didn't see each other again uh, until uh, about six years ago. I didn't remember him specifically because I was only ten. But I remember playing with other kids. I remember the station. I remember they had AL8 to drink. Y'all remember AL8? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> Kentucky, Kentucky thing. Kentucky. Uh -huh. um, but certain things I remembered. And um, in about uh, 2009, uh, my family was doing a developmental deal on Sony, and so they were booking me to write with new writers that I'd never written with before. And I, I do well because I write with mandolin. I, I do well with guitar players. So they said, you got to write with Jimmy Urie because he's a great guitar player and great singer. And he has a little bluegrass and gospel in his background. We think y'all would really hit it off. So I was like, sure, that sounds great. So Jimmy's publisher asked him if he would write with me. And Well, there's a whole lot in between there that we can't get into. But I have, <laughs> I have, I mean, for years, I just, I always, I just loved Sonia. And, and it's, uh, I just, I would tell my mom, I would joke with friends. I would just, I don't, you know, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm crazy, but I just, I love this girl and I just can't wait to reconnect with her one day. And so when my publisher said, would you like to write with Sonia? I jokingly said, yeah, if it's okay that I'm in love with her. And, uh -huh. 
And, a, and, she, and the publisher said, well, I guess we'll, we'll get around that. Just <laughs> let's, let's do it. And, uh, you know, and, and, we sh and I, sh I showed up that day. And uh, I hit my recorder because I had a song idea when I walked in. I hit my recorder. I said, please hold on. Just let me get this down. And I hit record and forgot to turn it off. And I recorded about the, f the five hours of literally of us falling in love. Flirting. Uh -huh. Wow. That was really sweet. That's awesome. Well, when did you realize, Sonia, that he was the kid that sat on the other side when, of the TV studio? When we studio? started talking about our background, and he said, I, my family sang with you guys at Beattyville, and I couldn't believe it. I mean, I... I I just, I was instantly in love with him too. And the whole day, we didn't write a song, but we like to say we started writing the rest of our lives. <laughs> because after that day, we just, uh, we were pretty inseparable. We just, we knew that it was a God thing. I had, uh, we'd both been married before and um, I have a wonderful stepdaughter that's almost 16 now. And um, and so we, our lives were in similar directions. We both had country, country careers as soloists for a while. We both became songwriters in country music. We both ended up divorced. And so we'd really been down similar paths, and we were both really praying that God would send, send us um, our soulmate and someone that we could, you know, love and, and grow old with. And honest to God, I prayed. And, you know, this is probably an, a brief version of the story, but I, um, I, I met a woman, one, a couple women, actually. It was weird because they knew that I was really praying for my spouse. And they said, we want, you know, we encourage you to make a list of everything that you're praying for and, you know, everything that you're wanting in a spouse and just pray over it every day, you know, be specific and pray about what you want. And so I, you know, I, I naively wrote down, um, well, I want him to be a little taller than me when I wear heels. Um, I, I want him to be a singer, you know, an athlete, a guitar player, a songwriter. Um, I'd like for him to have dark hair, blue eyes. I mean, I was just really specific. I, I mean, I really, really wrote down, you know, and, and I prayed over it just maybe not every day, but very often, you know, and, and, uh, and then after a year or so, I thought, well, I'll, I don't, he doesn't have to have brown hair and, I, you know, he doesn't really have to be a guitar player as long as he likes guitars and music. And so I started scratching off certain things that really weren't important, you know. Of course, the, the most important things remain, like I want him to be, you know, a Christian and um, love family and love traveling and kids. So, um, but, you know, when I met Jimmy, he was everything, not only on my second list, but on my first list. And so I'm just so thankful that God really brought us together and we have a beautiful son that's three years old. And Yeah, and, you know, there's um, been a lot of talk about, you know, being pulled out of the ditch, and, and I remember back uh, years ago before Sonia and I got together, Rory and myself uh, wrote, wrote together uh, a couple times, and, uh, and, I was, and, I, and he knew kind of where I'd, I'd been, and, and uh, you know, some people like myself just have to really make bad mistakes to realize the, the beauty in great things, and, and, so, and so God knew that, uh, that there was a time when I would be ready to meet someone who I consider to be as wonderful as Sonia, and and, uh, and that time was that day. Okay, you were 14 and she was 10. Did the age difference bother you? <laughs> <laughs> well, we got 23, 20, and no, we're fine. <laughs> oh, we've been around that today, so. So are you guys, uh, are you, do you go on the road with the Isaacs any? I, did, I played with them for about a year and a half. I played banjo and played some guitar and sang, and I love it, but Writing in the last several years has, has, has done well. And so You've I'm, written some pretty big hits in the last few years, haven't you? It's been a good past few years. Name, name some of them. Tell them. Um, I Drive Your Truck was Song of the Year this year. Woo! Uh, yeah. Bryce. Yeah. Anywhere With You went number one. Rascal Flats went number one. I got Chesney's new single and a lot of, lot of stuff. Just Ever since up. I came to the picture, he's had great luck. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why not sing a song? Y'all gonna do one together? Sure, we yeah. are. Huh? A yeah. song we wrote. Yeah. That's great. Right. Sonia Isaac, Jimmy Urie. Yeah. I can't believe we got to sing after Jimmy Fortune. <laughs> That's right. I'm here. Jimmy's a great songwriter. <laughs> He's a terrific songwriter. Oh. We don't ever get to do this together, so this is a treat for us. Yay. We are available for bookings. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> It's always been my dream not to sing in front of Ricky Skaggs and Jimmy Fortune, but uh, <laughs> this, this else is here? not my dream. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said it better than I did. I never thought that I could find Can't help but believe somehow it's hell. 
Sonia Isaacs and Jimmy Yuri. Are y'all going to record that, or have you recorded it? Or uh... Well, we were kind of hoping Ricky and Sharon might record it, but I think we missed that one, but I don't know. Yeah, that was a pitch. <laughs> we, might, um, we might do a record someday. We, we need about to it. do you know, that. I'd be honored to yeah. do it. I mean, I'm still a huge fan of this, of this girl singing, so, so to do an album with her would be a little dream come you true. You should do yeah. that. I'm your yes. fan too, Oh, my gosh. Maybe. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, that's terrific. Great song. Very Beautiful nice. harmonies, guys. Thank you. Thanks for sharing your story. Have y'all noticed that throughout the day today and, and here in, in this circle, we've, we've got people who've been married and together for long, long periods of time. And the faith, that there's the thread of faith that runs all around this room. There's been so many people talking about uh, God and how God brought them together and how he's blessed lives. And uh, I think it's, that's, that's amazing. And it's wonderful, and I think that uh, I think our audience, I think the people that are watching, are going to be very blessed by this. I do too. By the stories <laughs> that you guys have shared and uh, Thank you, Lord. opened up and uh, and and told. And Rory Feek is over there just <laughs> grinning, oh. like a no. I won't say like what, but you're... <laughs> that was a great story, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. that's inspiring. Great story, great song. Isn't it so good to? Hear young people singing such great country music. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Okay, so Joey and Rory, I'm sure you've told the story. Joey and Rory, you've told the story. Uh, <laughs> get a pencil, piece of paper, Larry. Hi, uh, <laughs> Rory. Why so <laughs> no, I, I, how, you, Rory? No, how did you meet and get together and uh, you became man and wife and uh, recording stars, TV stars together, <laughs> parents? Well, the... Uh, how we met is, I'm sure, much like a lot of people who have a dream of coming to Tennessee to chase your, your dreams of being a singer. And that's what I did. I moved here 
to, uh, to be a singer. I didn't know anything about it, but I knew that everyone said, go to the Bluebird Cafe. That's where all the songwriters are. And I didn't know what a songwriter was. I didn't know you could make a living. I mean, that they were actual people who wrote songs. <laughs> I came from a little town in Indiana that didn't, you know, kind of lived in a little box. But um, I went, and there were four guys playing, and there was one guy that just ripped my heart out. And he had this spiky hair, and he wore overalls, and he was singing these songs, though, and telling these stories. And I knew nothing about him. I just knew that that was the man I was going to spend the rest of my life with. Uh -huh. And I just had to know more about him. And so as I sat and listened to, to, to his performance and his songs, a few songs later, he introduced his little girls to the everybody in the crowd. And I was just sunk in my seat. And I said, oh, all the good ones are gone. I just assumed he was married. And so two years go by. Literally two years go by, and I go back working for the horse vet clinic down in Thompson Station, Tennessee, and, and working on my, my music. I had a deal on Sony Records at the time. And in the meantime, though, I always remembered his name, and I thought, gosh, if there was ever a man, it would be the standard of, of who I met that night, who I saw perform that night. And um, two years passed, and... I go to another writer's night through the advice of a, another person and said, there's this, I said, well, who's playing? And he said, well, this guy named Rory Lee and Rory Feek. And I said, wait, 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 wait. So this is the guy has got red spiky hair, wears overalls, and he sings a song about the chain of love. And he said, yeah, that's him. I said, oh, if that man wasn't married, I'd marry him tomorrow. I met him when I first moved, to, I saw him perform when I first moved to town. And the guy said, well, he's not married. I said, well, he's got these two little girls. And he said, well, that doesn't mean he's married. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm going. I got to go see who this guy is. And so I, I went that night. And all those feelings that I had that very first time I saw him came back to me. And I knew I was in trouble. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's kind of how we, we came about as me seeing him. Then you can kind of fill in. Well, we don't have enough time and for all don't. of it, but it's, it's a I've great story. It's much. a great story that God's given us a great testimony, not just in how we came to faith, but how we came to have our love story and how it continues on. She showed up at a writer's night two years after she had seen me play. And basically, she just told me that I'm the person she's supposed to spend the rest of her life with. And that doesn't usually happen with me, you know. I Believe it or not, I don't get that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and I didn't really believe it. And so some time went by, you know, and I, I needed a sign. Um, I remember when she wanted, she wanted me and her to start spending time together and dating. And I said, God, you have to send me a sign. And I was really working on my character like Jimmy. I had sort of gone and, and said, I'm just going to work on, on me and trying to make me healthy and get closer to God. And after this couple of years, Joey showed up. And, and so I said, I need a sign if, if this is really, this is so unusual. And so I went to Joey's house and uh, we had written one song together. And that evening, um, I, I was asking her questions. I said, well, why, when did you start singing? And she said, well, my dad played guitar. Um, when I was young, and I said, and, well, my dad played guitar when I was young. She said, I said, well, what kind of songs? And she said, well, my mom and dad sang songs. I don't know who wrote them or sang them. They were just songs they sang around the house. I said, my dad sang songs. I don't know who sang them. They were just songs he sang. I said, like what? And she picks up her guitar, and she sings Jim Reeves' Have I Told You Lately That I Love You from the 1950s. And I mean, and right then, my sister was with me, my sister Candy, and she just started, broke down crying, and uh, jumped out of the rocking chair, went in the bathroom. And I knew in that moment, like, that was my sign that we were supposed to be together because my whole life, you know, my dad really only knew about 10 songs, and that was his favorite song. And he sang it every day. And when he died in 1988, long before I met Joey, that was a song they sang at his funeral. And I'd been in Nashville seven years, and no one had even mentioned that title. So it was so clear to me. So Joey and I got engaged two months later. We got married two months after that. And um, we were married for five years. And her career never happened. I was working as a songwriter, and she, was, she opened a restaurant with my sister. And so um, we never, we went for five years and never sang ever together. We didn't know we were going to sing, but somehow Joey knew not just that we were going to be together, that there was something special going on. And so 
then uh, we got cast on a television show together and we somehow made it through that and, and now it's six years later and we're still singing together. <laughs> and Making great music. And, we, and now on, on top of it, we have a brand new baby together. My older daughters are 25 and 27 and doing fantastic. Joey came into their life when they were 13 and 15. I had been a single dad for about 12 years before that. And so Joey never wanted kids, ever wanted kids. Like she really, that was her thing. And, and, um, but a couple of years ago, she just said, God has been so good to me. She said, how can I, you know, how can I hold out and not give him all of me, all of my fears? So she said, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to trust him and give him everything, my biggest fear. So she uh, gets pregnant. And then in February, we had a baby. And she's the happiest person because she's a mama. It's like, it's, you know, as life should be. I'm telling you, we got a good story and we keep living it. And we're just so blessed to be in here in the midst of, of all these. You know, everybody here, TG, I never met him before. And he, for him to walk up and say, I'm a big fan of you guys. Like, am I in the twilight zone here? Because <laughs> we're such big fans of, of all of you all. And we're honored to be here, just be in your presence and just sit here. We take a, we take a seat back there behind the curtain and just look over to be here and so um, we feel so blessed, and we love country music, and we love the music that you brought to us, that Ricky and Sharon, and you know, we, every, every one of you is a memory for us that has brought us through our life. And um, I think with Joey and I, even with our television show, we just really want to be a little bit of a memory for someone else down the road, you know? So. Well, I don't think there's any doubt that what you will be. You know, they give me a little sheet here before we do these various segments, and they put song titles down. But every time Joy and Rory's name comes up, it doesn't give a song title. It says TBA, which I guess is to be announced. That sounds, so sounds I never know what you guys are going to sing. Do you to know? To be decided by Joy right before we get there. <laughs> That's what it means. Yeah, we know. Hey, you have, have you decided, Joy? She decided. I think we decided. Yeah, we're good. I think so. <laughs> well, poor Terry Choke, he, he runs the, the uh, department on getting songs and stuff. And what are you guys going to sing? And like, I don't know, hon. What do you want to sing? We never have a set list. We never know really what we're going to do. Um, but uh, I just felt like this was kind of one of those appropriate songs to sing today. It's our daughter Heidi. I know most of y'all know who she is. As Roy mentioned, we weren't supposed to have a career together. And um, Roy wrote this song years and years and years ago with the hopes that maybe someone like Tim and Faith might record this song. Or, or you know, y'all might record this song or something. Um, careers come and go. And uh, we may not always be at the top, but we always have each other. And that's the most important thing. Amen. If tomorrow I woke up and this dream wasn't here, and if I walked out on the stage and no one began to cheer, if the spotlight that I'm in should fade then disappear into the blue and if our new songs on the charts all began to fall and there is no more acclaim or gold records on the wall and if no one wants to come and hear us sing at all i'll sing I'll sing for you in the kitchen while you strum your old guitar Like we did when times were tough and luck was hard Oh, we never ever dreamed we'd get this far When the star that shines on me Packed its dust and gone And found somebody new To cast its magic on And all that I have left Is just this simple song I'll sing for you 
I'll sing for you In the kitchen while you strum your old guitar Like we did when times were tough and luck was hard Oh, we never ever dreamed we'd get this far If tomorrow I woke up And this dream wasn't here And if I walked out on the stage And no one began to cheer If the spotlight that I'm in Should fade then disappear I'll sing for you That's beautiful. Joey and Rory and Heidi. That's terrific, guys. Thank you for sharing not only your music, but your hearts and your, your story. It's an oh, inspiration you. to all of us, and we appreciate it very, very much. Larry Gatlin. Bill Anderson. <laughs> How long have you and Janice Gatlin been married? We win, don't we? We win! <laughs> are you the champions? We are. the champions. How many? Luckiest woman in town. <laughs> 45. Uh, August 9th was 45 years. Got him beat by what? Uh, Two six weeks? Six weeks, <laughs> something like that. Who, who, who's six weeks? Your elder six weeks? They win. Oh, they win. They, they, win. they are the champions. Yeah. 45 years, that's terrific. And we are the champions. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and there's another difference with the age difference. We have an age difference. Yeah. I'm the oldest. Ooh, wow. Cougar. Bye. Cougar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at 18 and 16, it was you. Cougar. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to embarrass I may be going the wrong place, but how, how many years difference? You are, Bill. You're the wrong two. Well, Just two. okay, I got the answer, <laughs> too. Okay, well, it's not a whole lot. Well, it, 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 that makes a difference when you're in high school. He's in high school and I'm in college. It is a big difference. Is that when you all started dating or met each other? We met in church. Uh, the brothers and I and our sister sang at uh, the church where Janice and her family went. And uh, we went to different high schools. I knew her brother. Her late brother was a dear friend of mine. We played against each other in football and baseball and sports. And her family was a very athletic family. Her she and her sister are both great uh, tennis players. So we, we knew each other a little bit. Oh, look at there, baby. Oh, nice no. bow tie, Larry that Wayne. That looks like yours, Dwayne and Norley. But uh, I had seen her at church and thought how beautiful she was at, because we'd sing in her church. And one night at the local drive-in, I was just walking by the car. You know, it was Nikki's drive-in where everybody would hang out, you know, to go get Cokes and hamburgers. And she and a friend of hers were sitting in the car. And I said, aren't, aren't you... Janet, <laughs> honey, don't ever do your hair like that again. <laughs> I won't do mine like that if you won't do yours. Like that. I was on Mary Tyler Moore day. <laughs> wow. So uh, we we sat and talked for a while, and I knew she was uh, the you know the most popular girl at Odessa College, you know, head cheerleader, senior class favorite, or you know, freshman favorite, all that. And at that time, see. As a good Pentecostal boy, we didn't go to movies. It was that old deal. We don't smoke, we don't chew, we, we don't, don't go, go with, with girls, girls that do. do. We ain't got no girlfriends. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I just, I, I was not allowed to go out and do that. I, I had snooked out. Well, I don't know what snooks Nick have snooking that night. So, but we talked and I, I said, one of these days, because I knew she was a couple years older than I am and it was the hot rock on the block up there at Odessa College. I said, one of these days, I'm just going to pretend I'm rich and famous, big football star, and, you know, all that, and ask you out on a date. And she kind of smiled a little bit, so. The next day, a good friend of ours who went to their church, David Webb, a good friend of mine, said, I know somebody who's crazy about you. I said, who? He said, Janice Moss. Well, I said, what is her phone number right now? <laughs> and I went and called her, and uh, uh, Dad let me borrow the car. And uh, didn't we go see Goldfinger? We did. Go in Midland, Texas. Finger. Wow. Uh, our first date. And I went home and told my mother. I said, I've married, I, I met the woman I'm going to marry. 
And uh, we went out the second date. Uh, just a second date was just kind of like kissing the back of your hand. Just, I mean, you know, no tongue, just a little. Just, <laughs> yeah. and, um, and the third date. <laughs> Tell it all, Larry. Oh well, the third date, I asked her to marry me. She said no. As I kissed around her a little, good, little more, she said yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we went steady for five years. Uh, and, and I'm going to, you know, y'all know that I'm a clown. Let me tell you about this woman. She had enough strength for the both of us to do this the right way. People ask us, how have you been married that long? I said, we knew each other. And I'm not, we're not talking about judgmentalism, about anything. I'm talking about the way this woman did it. She was strong enough to do the right thing when we were dating, you know, and we knew each other in every way you can know another human being without the way that God, you know, uh, the big momentous climactum, you know what I'm saying? And she was strong enough because I was panting like a little poodle dog, you know what I mean? Twitter uh, painted. But the first time that this The grandkids woman, are listening. Our grandkids are listening, it's okay. They need to know this. Well, I'm, I'm serious. They know the poodle dog part? <laughs> yeah, the poodle dog part. Maybe a German shepherd in my case. <laughs> they probably hadn't heard that part, Dwayne. But I, I'm grateful, you know, for all the stuff, you know, a lot of us, you know, have been through and down and out. You know, that'll, uh, they're called the Ten Commandments, not the Ten Suggestions. That's right. And when this woman said, love, honor, cherish, now, she's a little weak on that obey part, but love, <laughs> honor, <laughs> cherish, through, for better or worse, through sickness and health, through good times and bad. Uh, when the man, you know, in that picture right there, turned into something, uh, a, a very sick puppy, a very sick poodle dog, uh, 35 years ago. Uh, you know, your life really will turn south on you when you live by the motto that even Colombian drug lords' children have to eat. So that was kind of what I was going through years ago, as we all know about that. But through all of that, she prayed for me. She uh, stood by me. Uh, she's my very best friend. Uh, she kisses good, and I just absolutely adore the broad. <laughs> Janice, what, was it Larry's humility that attracted yes, you? Yes, it was. <laughs> Absolutely, it was. <laughs> you know, I look at you guys, and I don't know all the, the whole story, but I know you went through some tough times, and, and I know you, you left here, you went back to Texas, you came back here. I, I, the, the song that comes to mind looking at y'all and talking with you is My Elusive Dreams. <laughs> kind of, you Curly. know, I followed you wherever. You want to tell them that part? Please. I've talked a lot. I've, I've... Moving back to Texas. Well, you know, the elusive dreams part... Y'all know about Dottie, you know, when Dottie West, uh, when I met her out in, in Vegas uh, working, uh, you know, with the Imperials, trying out for the, the gospel group and with Jimmy Dean. And Janice stayed home and taught school because I was in law school at that time. So I went out and tried out for the group for a month, thought I had the job, and they decided to hire another guy. So Dottie said, you know, you look enough like Mickey Newberry, you got to be able to write a song. I wrote a couple of tunes and uh, went back to Houston, wrote eight songs, sent them to her. And she sent me a plane ticket. And Janice said, Larry, let's go do it. I'll teach school. I'll do what we have to do. If you don't try this, you're never going to be happy. I will support you. And, and let me tell you, through 45 years, let me tell you now, she's taking care of four generations of Gatlins. When I'm on the road, she takes care of my 87 and 86-year-old mother and father. When I'm there, she takes care of me. She takes care of both of our kids, one of whom is leaving for Abu Dhabi next week, and that is the other side of McMinnville, somewhere. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, she takes care of our other daughter and son-in-law and our granddaughters, and it's just the perfect mother, friend, grandmother, friend, lover uh, that any human being could have. And uh, she said, go do it. You'll never be happy if you don't do it. I think I'm the only one here that that is very uncomfortable right now. Because <laughs> either y'all will sing with your spouse, you two, or you work with your spouse, and I don't do that. This, this freaks me out to be in front of a camera. Doesn't she and, look freaked and, out, huh? <laughs> so I, I'm a good audience. I'm a good um, homebody. I keep a pot of soup on. 
I, I'm, I'm good in the background. I, you know, I don't, I don't work with him. I don't sing with him. Um, I'm there. He, was, he mentioned a minute ago that um, he wasn't, at the time, he wasn't actually living at the foot of the cross. And he would come home, and he wrote a song that, that nobody, I don't think anybody's ever heard, and I don't remember if it's on an album or what album it's on, but he, call, he called it Home is Where the Healing Is. And I think that's what got us through this hard part because I, I loved it when he came home. I, like I said, I had a pot of soup. Um, the road is, is really rough. And I think we both had a foundation is one reason I think we made it. But I had to have that foundation at home for my kids and for, and for Larry. So that I felt like was my job. So, so real you are... Good what Larry Henley described in one of the greatest songs ever written, you're the wind beneath That's his wings. Absolutely. And everybody needs that. That's right. And you're to be commended for it. And you don't have to sing. <laughs> <laughs> but you do, Larry. I do. Yeah, you do. Janice came up to me backstage before we came out, and she said, please tell me I don't have to sing. I said, you don't have to sing. <laughs> oh, that girl of mine. Mm -mm -mm. Stretch it out, buddy. You going to sing, Larry? <laughs> I'm going to try to, D.A. <laughs> the only one in here I've known longer than Janice is Dwayne Allen, my favorite lead singer in the world right there. Give my buddy a hand. I love him. Let me see if this is tuned. That's a little sharp. How do we tune guitars without those little things? Very badly. Very badly. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, it just sounded like there's more of us when they weren't tuned, you know. Well, I, uh, is that right? Come on. I used get, to not make solid body acoustics, son. I know, isn't that a mess? How'd they ever do that? I don't play near that well. Turn that down a little bit, please, if you would, in there. Uh, I wrote a song specially for today's uh for this visit. Did y'all know that? I, I wrote a special, I haven't really got it finished yet, but it's uh, <laughs> No one gets the black eye and no one gets the blame when your wife and your girlfriend are one and the same. <laughs> it's just a little thing I'm working on. Powerful, ain't it? Oh, Lord. Yeah, really, they can turn this down just a little bit.
into a smile when she holds me the kingdoms of this world could rise and fall and I Beautiful song, Larry. Janice, do you... Uh... No, I don't sing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just wondering, about, he, he talked about you taking care of various people. In the family. Do you have a close relationship with the brothers? With, uh, oh, I with do. Steve and Rudy. I do. Um, Steve's wife, Cynthia, is my best friend. Has been since they got married and we got married. And people used to say, how do you stand it when they're on the road? This was back years ago, but... When Larry was gone, Steve was gone. So Cynthia and I would hang out together. We had a great group of the band wives and, and the brothers' wives. So, Larry, do you remember the time when I was doing one of the backstage at the Opry shows and I came out to your house and we filmed a segment of the show in your hot tub? Bill, you know, I wasn't going to tell people about that, especially on the Sweetheart Show. <laughs> <laughs> Just, just the two of you? <laughs> no, he had his rubber duck in there with him. So. Well, my career uh, could use a good rumor, but I don't know if it, I've already written that, by the way. I was trying I, to get a visual. <laughs> I do remember that uh, many years ago. You know, one of the first uh, 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 really big stars who, who put, uh, put me on, on one of their shows. And we laughed and giggled and had a big time. I remember Josh, I mean, Josh is 38. He was just a little old boy paddling around. He might have been five or six years old. Yeah. So it, I do remember that. I it sure was did. fun, and I remember y'all were very hospitable to us and our whole crew and everybody. So when, when John is talking about having the uh, pot of soup on the stove and everything, I, uh, I know that's real. Well, it really is. Like I say, in every, in every way that, I, that a man could, could hope for, uh, you know, a mother, a friend, this woman can cook. <laughs> this woman can... You know, she's always wondering about what are you going to do for dinner? You want me to cook something? I said, baby, if you never cook dinner for me or any meal again for me the rest of my life, I'm way ahead of the game. Let me take you somewhere. She said, no, I've got, and she's just, I really like you too. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Herb Sanker is married to uh, Ron DeVinson, and you came up with a fabulous line a while ago, and it makes me want to ask you, Herb, and, and by the way, you've, Totally outdressed all of us here today. <laughs> uh, it's really great to have you. It's good to be here. Rhonda Vincent is one of the most driven, motorized people I have ever known. I, my way is, I don't think I have ever seen her when she wasn't wound up and going. And, and I, I know she loves what she does, and she does it so well. But I guess my question to you is, is there a, is there a switch somewhere that you can... Turn her off. You just let her go. Tie a feather duster to her and let her fly when she gets home. <laughs> house is clean. Just like that. <laughs> no, she, she, uh, uh, she's the hardest working person I've ever been around. Uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> I couldn't hold a candle to it and wouldn't even try. Mm -hmm. But uh, she, she's very hard working. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's music, home, whatever the case may be, she goes after it with everything. Now, do you work with her uh, in some regard in, in the business? Or do you yeah, I, I, I do all of her booking, book all of her jobs. And, uh, boy, I tell you what, sitting here with all this talent, I'm thinking, wow, wouldn't this be fun to book a few shows? Well, that's <laughs> great. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. How long we, how long? I think about 2007. Seven sure. years? Yeah, something okay, like that. something like that. But I've been in sales and marketing my whole life, so it's a pretty easy thing to do. If I can't sell her, I don't know who could. 
How'd y'all meet? Uh, he hired me in his band. <laughs> he needed a fiddle player back in the urban cowboy days. Um, he worked at a place called JR's in Kirksville, Missouri. And uh, he called my, well, he asked around, needed a fiddle player, put together a band for uh, St. Patty's Day. Well, I needed a girl singer and a fiddle player. Oh. And of course, you know, you can't just call the girl. You got to talk to the dad. And uh, I talked to the dad and, and yeah, she can play the fiddle. And I said, well, how good is she? And well, I said, well, can she play the orange blossom special? He said, standing on her head. That's a good enough. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we did. We, we put a few shows together. We do a little singing together, a few duets here and there. And, and uh, uh, pretty soon uh, we got married. Cool. And y'all have... Like, we really have nothing exciting. Go back to the Gatlins if you're on. Right. <laughs> I, I'm amused because uh, he is... A, I, I loved... I wanted to tell him that it was mandatory. Larry said that we had to hold hands through this whole show because he does not believe in any PDA. He blushes every time right he on. sees Joey and Rory kiss. You're the same way. I like. shook her hand at our wedding. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's our wedding right there. I think you we have not. some pictures of that. Yeah. Well, while that picture is up, everybody look at that. Because there's Aww. young uh, Ron. I want you to look at the second <laughs> little one there dressed up from the right. That is your brother, Darren That's Vincent, my brother, who Darren. is now a part of Daily and Vincent. That's when he had hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and on the other side, um, by, by me, is my little brother, Brian, that probably nobody sees. He's a, a chief financial officer for a company up in Chicago. No. Oh. But a great singer and play. Yeah. Well, I have never been around anybody. I know we, we do these cruises where we do the family reunion cruises. We go to the Caribbean and we just got back from Alaska and things. You never stop. I mean, you are you do our regular shows and then you hold jam sessions all over the boat and entertain people and, and the fans love it. They absolutely love the fact that you're so committed to your music and uh, and so committed to entertaining them. You know, I grew up at, and you know playing festivals and that's what we did. We play our shows, but we also, well, just like Sharon and Ricky and, and Cheryl and and uh, you would jam, you know, after that. We, we, normally you'd be there for the whole weekend, you know, like you're on a cruise several days and uh, we would play on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And so you're there and you would jam after the show, maybe till 6 a.m., do a Sunday morning gospel show. So yeah, I, I would just, it's just an extension of what we do. But, uh, but I am I'm so glad that we get to, to come and hold hands and, and all this kissing on camera. I know. He, <laughs> Don't he you even so... think about it. <laughs> Don't even think about it. <laughs> I've just been here. Okay. Enjoy... I'll do it. <laughs> I've just been enjoying myself. <laughs> Just knowing how uncomfortable he is. Yeah, I'm watching him shy away from all of that. You sure you're a former musician? <laughs> poor one. <laughs> poor I have one. to say, you know, um, he's the one that was home taking care of the girls. You know, when the girls were little, I was traveling with my family. And then when I put my own band together, and he's the guy that, um, you know, he was Mr. Mom. Or they would say, you know, is, uh, is your husband going to babysit? It's like, no, he's their dad. You know, he's yeah, watching the kids. Right. Yeah, and you have uh, two? we have two daughters. Yeah, Sally and Tinsel, and and he's there. Um, I'll never forget. Sally had these beautiful ringlets <laughs> in her hair, and uh, he was getting getting her ready for school or for Sunday church, school, yeah, for church, and could not get the comb through her hair. And he put her in the bathtub and grabbed a hold of her hair <gasps> and ear chopped ear. it off. Oh, no. she took that brush right <laughs> through it. She said, "Boy, Dad, she says that's great. Mom's gonna kill you." <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know, when dads take over, when dads take over that, that Mr. Mom thing, you're t I mean, we, you did the only thing you knew to do. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's it. I, I, I'm that sorry. Solve the problem. Kristen, yeah. our daughter was three and a half. Three and a half years old. Janice was pregnant with Josh, and the brothers and I were nominated for a Grammy in LA. So Janice said, why don't you take Kristen with you? So we did. And you were just teach. How, how, you taught me how to roll it. I was teaching him how to pin her hair back, roll it like this, and put, uh -huh. put a bread in it because it was short bangs. I never had. There was no girls in my family except for well, my mom. And and if you want to know the score of a football game, you call her. She'll tell you what it is. I mean, she, well, I she's had like no one of the boys. Idea. You know, Janice just said, "I'm putting on this tux," and Kristen's in the bathtub. She said, "She said, Daddy, can I get my hair a little bit wet?" I said, "Just however you and Mama do it." 
They had just called the limos downstairs. Oh. So I walked in there. She's laid in the bathtub and that hair is floating oh. like this. So I freaked, I freaked. I, I put a oh. towel around it, grabbed her. We got in the elevator, took her down, got in the limo and took, and backstage they had those, you know, the vans back there. And I knocked on the van that said Dolly Parton, Barbara Mandrell, and Barbara Fairchild. I knocked on the door, <laughs> handed them a three and a half year old girl, and they handed me back a 30 year old woman with <laughs> lipstick, plucked eyebrows, and hair down the hair. That's my daddy. We don't know what to do. They weren't there to rescue him that day. <laughs> oh, Lord. And he, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's a sweetheart, but he always says that, uh, you know, he, uh, he wrote the book on how to be a good wife. <laughs> and he would, oh, I would get home from a show, he'd leave the wood I'd box empty. This you ain't know? the newlywed game, is it? Oh, yeah, it is the way. It's the telling secrets part, you know? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, he just says, on his Facebook, he says he, he wrote a book on how to be a good wife, and it's, you know, cook and cleaning. And in fact, last night at 11 o'clock, I was ironing <laughs> this shirt, and he put that on Facebook and good said, picture. just like a good wife should be. <laughs> <laughs> I trained her well, I'm telling you. <laughs> well, we talk about you never running down. How about a song from Rhonda uh, Vincent? Absolutely. Yeah. I'll do this especially for him. It says, I give all my love to you. search for all my life someone to share and comfort I envision in my mind but when I wasn't looking you appeared before my eyes just you
Beautiful, Rhonda. I saw that. That was in public. Oh, it was Pretty in big public. smile on his face over there, too. And he blew her a kiss. You know, I saw I that. Said, yes. How about, and you know, I have to tell you, if you need curtains, Oh boy! Here that he go. is the guy to call, you know, from being home. <laughs> I need curtains. Well, you don't you want. Know, trust me, you don't he, want good. Listen, he his his parents moved in next door to us, and they were had to modify the house. He has a mentally challenged brother, Steve, whom is the absolute epitome of unconditional love. Yes. And um, hi to Steve. I know he's going to be watching. He will this. be watching. And um, so they had to modify the home before they could move in. He well, said, when you get home, uh, you and mom can go uptown and, and order the curtains for the house. And because his dad said, we, I am not hanging curtains, not doing it. His dad is Herb Sr. And uh, so in his haste and impatientness, he ended up, he called me one day. He said, took care of the curtains. Mom and I went up to Beards, uptown Kirksville. He said, I had the curtains ordered in 15 minutes. He said, we opened the book. He said, I'll take those. And uh, they got, he got the same fabric for the entire house. <laughs> he got brown in one room Consistent. and blue in the bedroom. And, he, and now he, he wrote a check. He thought he had paid for most of it. And he wrote a check for $1,000 and thought that, that's installation and everything. And I got home, and I go through all the mail, and I pay all the bills. And I opened this up, and I looked at this, and I said, um, what kind of curtains did you get? He said, what do you mean? He had ordered cashmere curtains, <laughs> and they were $10,000. A $60,000 house and $10,000 curtains, man, I'm telling you. I don't need curtains. I don't need curtains. Yeah, I'm they were already custom made and installed when he got the bill. Wow. So uh, come to come to Kirksville, Missouri, and check out Herb's Casual Curtains. <laughs> That's a great story. I hate to rush, but we're getting a little short on time. I was just told, and we've been here talking about love today, and love is so many different things. Ricky Skaggs has got a song that's got just a slightly different take on love and I think it would be wonderful if you kind of put the ribbon around this whole thing today and and shared this song that uh, if I understand it you you wrote it for your mom and dad is that right? Well I didn't write it uh, I sang it for my mom and dad but Jim Rushing uh, wrote this song one of my he was one of my songwriters at the time uh, when I had a publishing company at Welk and uh, Jim's a great songwriter had written quite a and few a dear songs. Friend. Had a dear, very dear friend, and uh, my friend Terry Choate uh, asked for this song because he he said he's always loved it. And uh, I can just tell you, I haven't sung this song in 25 years, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to do my best today to do a good job on it. I want to, but uh, uh, my my precious old mom and dad. I think about them when I uh, sing this song. Because I remember uh, Lori Ann Crook, when she was doing some shows for uh, TNN, came up and interviewed my mom and dad and uh, came up to Blaine, Kentucky. And uh, <laughs> I just remember dad, uh, I sung this song for them and he just he couldn't stand it. You know, he just... He just had to, started bawling right there on, <laughs> on the camera. And it just tore me up. Don't be thinking about that, okay? <laughs> it's called Thanks Again. Yeah. Wait till it's over. <laughs> I know the song, it's good. <laughs> I've sent bouquets for Mother's Day, for Father's Day a shirt and a card. And while they came from the heart, they all fell short of saying how special you both are. It wasn't till I was up and gone. Married with a couple of kids of my own 
Doing what mamas and daddies do That I realized what I must have put you through So thanks again for the love in the cradle And all of the changes that kept me dry And thanks again for the love at our table and tanning my bottom when I told you a lie for taking me fishing and flying my kite and tucking me in yes night after night to my beautiful lifelong friends hey mom and daddy thanks again Still a young man, at least I think I am. But I'm watching my own hair turn gray. And your call last Sunday brought to mind that I owe you a debt I can never repay. So thanks again for worrying and waiting when I started. Thanks again for the love at a table and tan my bottom when I told you a lie. Your car for the prom, your letters in all, but most of all, Daddy, for marrying Mom. To my beautiful lifelong friends, hey. Thanks again To my beautiful lifelong friends Hey, Mom and Daddy, thanks again Thanks again. Ricky Skaggs, everybody in this room, thank you so much for being here for our sweetheart's reunion. Thank you for the music and the stories and the love that you shared. We'll see you next time on Country's Family Reunion.
Thank you.